What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Panthers franchise. And today we have ourselves the second off season. It was an up and down year, to say the least. We had some very good things, some very bad things. We ended up finishing seven and 10. We ended up losing the last game to the Seahawks. Nothing really happened from there until now. So I just figured let's just pick it up here in the off season. We do have some recaps to go over. First, we will do a season recap. So it ended up being the Bills taking on the Buccaneers. And as you can see, the Bills won. Josh Allen was the MVP of the Super Bowl. Yearly awards, Patrick Mahomes was the MVP. Robert Saleh was the coach of the Jets. Holy cow, this is an exact opposite of like real life in my world. Whoa. <laughs> Amandre St. Brown, Offensive Player of the Year. Jawan Bentley, Defensive Player of the Year. And that is right. You see that Deion Boyd winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. We had three players in the top five for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Boyd went one. Overton was two. And then Theo Judge somehow snuck into like five, I think. Five or maybe six. Maybe it was six. I'm not sure off the top of my head. And then defensively, Jordan Hillman from the Jaguars was the rookie of the year there. We are going to take a look at what we have to upgrade and then also take a look at the team to see who is what when it comes to the development trades. Because as we know, the role has happened. So upgrade players. Somehow after the offensive rookie of the year, Deion Boyd only got <laughs> one overall upgrade. Okay. Must have, they must have uh, adjusted that. I, I feel like they used to get more. But we're going to do Scrambler again because the last time I did Scrambler, it actually helped close that gap on strong arm. And I'm hoping it does the same here. We did not go anywhere overall wise, which is good. Two breaks, sack, three throw on the run, throw under pressure. Oh, we had no movement at all on field general either. Austin Corbett getting one. We are just going to do, um, let's do agile for him. And he gets awareness, two pass block, pass block finesse and run block finesse. Devon Kirkland getting an upgrade as well. And we're going to do elusive for that. Duke move and four to spin. Wow, that's a pretty substantial upgrade for spin move. And then we are on to, I believe, yeah, the practice squad guys. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to hit that triangle, let them all upgrade, do what you guys want. All right. Now let's take a look at the roster and let's see where players are sitting right now when it comes to the development because. There was a roll. Okay. Was Theo Judge not star? Did he lose star? He did. Theo Judge lost his star development. And he is now normal. I don't even know if I even have uncovered that, but I, I knew he was hidden. So Theo Judge, after sort of a disappointing season, drops to star. And I can't remember. I don't believe we knew that Overton was an X Factor, did we? I knew he was at least superstar because we saw that he had the extra ability, but he ends up being a superstar X factor. Yeah, he didn't go up at all. Wow, and he didn't win any award to make a adjustment there. So, so now we have a quarterback and wide receiver duo that is an X factor. That's awesome. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones is normal. I think he was already normal. So we ended up having quite a few guys change like Stump, who was a star, he's now normal. Leggett is still star. Uh, Mobley, I believe, was normal from the get-go. Yeah, okay. So not a whole lot of change around here. We only had one player make the Pro Bowl. And that player was Trevin Wallace. And because of it, he went up to star development. Something that I guess I overlooked, but looking at his season stats, he had a pretty impressive season. He had 133 tackles, eight tackles for loss, six sacks, and an interception along with nine pass deflections. He was a very good player for us, somebody that I am looking forward to growing in the coming seasons. And because of that, he went up to star dev along with Shock West Green. Jack Thompson ended up taking a pretty big hit. He's now down to an 82 overall. So some of this, the things that I was worried about are, are starting to come true. Um, you know, these guys are losing their overalls. They're getting a little bit older. But right now, we still have a pretty good unit at the linebacker position, something that I'm not too concerned about. And it looks like Anthony Barr went down to a 64 and Perryman down to a 66. Now, these are two guys that I was considering bringing back. But now I think I'm going to just let them go. That They're going to want too much money for what they are in terms of experience so not a lot of change 
anyway a few guys losing some overalls with regression um some guys getting some reductions in their development but that was sort of expected for me anyway i i knew that this team was not exactly ready for anything major and that we still had a lot of holes on this team we had a lot of players in place that were more of just fillers guys that we know aren't going to be around long term but they're keeping us afloat for the time being now we have to consider what we're going to do moving forward um we do have some staff points so we're going to go ahead and get those taken care of right away i think i might actually put these towards the off season or the uh, player personnel tree instead we haven't been able to get this started and if we do this one, this is where we get discounts on CPU picks and stuff. So we're going to do that. And we can do this one too right away. And then maybe over here. I don't really care about center signing. But we only have one more left that we can do. Discount on players under 80 overall on re-sign. See, I'd rather have the signing portion of it instead of re-signing. Because I know there's not a lot of players that I really care about. So we're going to go ahead and do this one where it's going to guarantee a trade package for current user pick during the draft. I think that's a better option. And we are down to 25. I don't know if I can do any more over here. No, I cannot. So that is where we're at. We got our points spent. And I do think it's time for us to make some changes, though. I really do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to fire Seth Henry. And I think we're going to fire Jackson Pierce. We're going to bring in new faces and we're going to reshape this team. Dave Canales is going to be our head coach still. Um, just because I think I still think there's some stuff there. I think we have a lot of stuff to do. And I don't want to I don't want to throw it all away. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to move on from our coordinators. And now let's look for their replacements. All right. So here we are. Um, I accidentally signed a, a coach. I think he's going to be on the back here. <laughs> Yeah, here he is. Um, I accidentally signed Thomas Peters because I forgot this is the week where you can um, hire them for any position. So since I clicked on offensive coordinator, that's what I'm hiring for. So let's take a look here and see where we are at. Who do we want to bring on to be the next guy to coach up our new quarterback, Deion Boyd? There's a lot of faces here. I want to try to find something that's going to fit him, not just something that's going to be uh, a cool you know story so right now brandon starks spread not something i want to run he does run the tampa bay playbook though tampa bay does have a pretty decent playbook manuel ortega vertical zone run runs philly not a fan of philly especially with boyd he is not that mobile of a quarterback uh jason brown listed as a head coach he is from the bills multiple power run no Vertical zone run with Tampa Bay's Dana Clawson. And that's why you're seeing hiring bonuses zero because when I signed Peters on accident, I got the signing bonus for him. Um, so we just don't get them more. It's, I like that because then you can't cheese the system. They used to be able to just like, you would you could fire them and then rehire somebody else and you get all the points. And it was just, it was cheesy. So I'm glad they fixed that. Um, Tampa Bay. West Coast power run under the Giants. I'm not sure if the Giants have a really good playbook. Dallas is not a bad option. The problem is we don't know what his normal stuff is going to be for offensive coordinator because he's a head coach right now. And that's going to be a problem. But I'm going to come back to Golden because Dallas does sound like a decent playbook. Um, we also have Sam Borst, Cincinnati, West Coast owner, and that would fit with us. We also have to take a look at some of the guys who are actual like coordinators because those guys will have more like see they'll actually have stuff available to them in the like their specialties all right so after looking through the list what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to bring gallo in <laughs> i'm not necessarily going to use the kansas city book but we are going to make a decision on a playbook whether that's my i finished up the um i'm trying to finish the custom book to use for the the next season um and i'm hoping to use that and we'll just you know call that as ramiro gallo's system but he has quarterback guru which i think is important power running which could help with theo judge down the line and open field moves so i like those as the specialty so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hire him as our offensive coordinator and now on the defensive side of things we have a lot of options here as well we need to find something that's going to fit our 4-3 system 
I was not a huge fan. I mean, I liked our playbook a little bit, but I, I know it could use some work still. We were using the, the uh, Bears playbook. I'm almost leaning right now towards maybe somebody like Jason Brown or Emmanuel Ortega because they're running Philly and Buffalo. Um, Dallas is also a very good defensive book. That might end up being the one we want to go with here. Dan Golden. Just looking to see if I can find any other ones that are more 4-3 uh, oriented. Yeah, so that's really the only one. So I think we're going to go and we're just going to go ahead and we are going to end up bringing on... Where is he? Dan Golden as our defensive coordinator. We're going to pick up using the Dallas playbook and see how that works for us this upcoming season. And of course, that gives us a lot of points. And now we can take those points and we can try and figure out what we want to do with their situation. So we already know that the running is the power running is in, in effect. Boost awareness for halfback. OK, so we already have the one that I would want. That is good. OK, and he's maxed out on both of those. So that is really good. Um, we also have X factor on for quarterback. Throw on run. I like this because those are the, the smaller ones. These, he seems to get all the time with his upgrades, like medium accuracy, deep accuracy, whatnot. So I'm actually all for it. We have maxed out throw under pressure, maxed out throw on the run, and one of three for uh, break sack. That'll be huge for Deion Boyd and his development. And then over here on the open field, I think this is where we want to maybe consider getting this stuff taken care of. Um, so this is for receivers, really. Boost agility for wide receivers, change of direction, spin move, juke move, and then we can get acceleration for both. So we're going to load up on this side here. Um, I definitely want change of direction, agility. Short route running is, is very big too. But first, before we go ahead and spending too many points, our defensive coordinator does not have a lot of stuff going for him. So we're going to get him started. Boost toughness for what we got. We got to do this anyway. Or inside. All right. This one is listed as an inside 3-4. But there are still things. We can choose a side here that will help us a lot. This one does play rec for DNs. Pursuit for outside backers. Power moves for defensive ends. Zone coverage for outside linebackers. That could be big if we get down to the bottom there. Bottom is boost tackling. Um, the other side is boost speed for middle linebackers. Strength for defensive tackles. Man coverage for middle linebackers and block shedding for defensive tackles. And I honestly think I want to go this side. Having extra man coverage and speed for our middle linebackers would be key, especially considering we are trying to turn somebody into the next Shaq Thompson for us. So we're going to go right down here and we're going to get that started. And then over here on full blitz, we're going to get this first one started right away. This one is boost acceleration for outside linebackers, strength for middle linebackers, power moves for middle, finesse moves. For, so this is definitely the fourth or three, four side. Boost strength for safeties, finesse moves for... Why in the flip would I do that? Okay, well, this one does sp boost speed for corners, but that's just really weird. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to do this left side here for the, the strength and the power moves. With blitzing and whatnot, it'll come in handy. And then over here, I want to get this taken care of. So boom, there we go. So we have our defensive coordinator stuff at least sort of started. And we have our offensive coordinator started. And uh, now we are ready to go on to the rest of the offseason. Retirements this year, Stefan Gilmore deciding to hang it up after 14 seasons. Jordan Poyer as well, Tyler Lockett, Cameron Jordan, Andy Dalton deciding to, to hang it up as well. Keenan Allen retiring, uh, Kirk Cousins retiring. So I think the, the writing was on the wall after Penix took over for Atlanta. So now Cousins deciding to call it a career. And now Atlanta is definitely, without without a doubt, led by Michael Penix Jr. So that will be very fun to see play out over the next couple of seasons. Lane Johnson, he's retiring. Adam Thielen retiring. Zach Martin. So there are there were some pretty big names. Von Miller, Jimmy Ward. All right. And then taking a look at the staff moves, Antonio Pierce was fired as the Raiders head coach. John McVay fired as the Rams coach. Mike Tomlin fired? Wow. And that was everybody. So three big moves from the head coaching trees. Now it's time for us to come to the re-sign stage. We have a player meeting on field. Let's see what this is about. We're already in training camp. Okay, well, that's interesting. We're not. My agent's been telling me that my number one motivation should be more meaningful. What's your motivation? 
Oh, God. I really felt being close to home. Would you change that about me? I want you to care more about being a good scheme fit. Let's see what he says to this. Coach, I don't feel like you've built up enough trust with me to take your advice. Oh, okay, dude. That was a pretty big slap in the face there, Mr. Peoples Jones. All right. Well, now it's on to the negotiation side of things, and he still wants money. He still wants nine million over two years. I just, I just, I can't. It was one thing when he had a development trait, but now he's down to normal. He has no interest with us. I'm not overpaying for this guy. All right, well, I decided to just remove Stump. He dropped in development. He clearly does not want to sign with us, and he wants nine million a year. You have not even caught a football in the NFL, and you're over here trying to tell me that you need nine million a year. Well, that's not going to happen, especially considering I could probably find three of you in the free agency. Jerome Ford. This is one where we ended up just deciding to move on. It didn't end up being a good fit for us. If we see him in free agency and there's nothing else that we want to go after, that's cool. Taylor Moten is another one that is up for contract. And I just, I just can't do it. I can't. He's an 82 overall, I know, but we only have 40 million. He has no interest, which means I'd have to go to a player friendly or very player friendly, which is means three to four years. I'm just not comfortable doing that. Um, I'm really not. And he doesn't like our, our head coach. He doesn't like our big our, our market size. So we're just going to let him hit free agency. Um, and that's going to be that's going to be about it. Same with Kareem Bryant. This guy wants almost nine million, too. Dude, what? You were on the practice squad the whole season. No. No. We already removed it from him. We removed it from him. Dave and Clowney, weirdly enough, didn't really lose much overall. I was not anticipating that. But still wants a lot of money. Eric Watts, one year 4.3. I can't do that. I'm sorry, man. I know I liked you for a little bit there, but not anymore. Pierre Strong, two years, 6.6 .6 million. Given the fact that we're moving on from Jerome Ford, this might not be a bad move. Did I ever re-sign to Von Kirkland? I th yes, I did. Uh, these two guys, I know we're going to go get rid of. Just not worth it at this point. So we have to bring those guys in. I want to try to bring back Yash Nijman. I don't think he'll re-sign. I'm just going to offer him a neutral deal. I will give him an extra couple of thousand or a couple of hundred thousand to see if that strikes anything but if not i'm not going to be too yeah he doesn't want to okay chandler zavala younger left guard he has no interest okay you know what nobody wants to sign here not a soul nobody wants to sign fine then all of you can go to free agency i don't care all right so right now we have 54.6 million but we also have 24.9 million in dead cap which is going to be tough. I don't know if there's a way for us to alleviate any of this for, you know, free agency. We may try to restructure a deal or something, but right now it's looking like we're just going to be sort of SOL when it comes to a few of these things. There is going to be quite a few changes taking place here. All right. And before we dive into free agency, we should really look at what this team did this year. Deion Boyd finished with 33 touchdowns and 18 interceptions. We know we had an up and down year. We know we've seen some really good flashes out of them. Rushing wise, it was a mess this year. We had no answers no matter where we looked. Deion Boyd was almost our leading rusher. It was it was not good. Um, Jonathan Brooks still ended up finishing as our leading rusher, even though he was hurt for almost, I think, more than half the season, maybe right on the cusp of half the season. Theo Judge just never got up and running at all. Neither did Tavon Kirkland. Like, nobody really did. So it's going to be Brooks or not, or Bust, really, for, for this next season. Receiving-wise, Donovan Peoples-Jones did lead us with receptions and yards. 91 for 1197. And he had seven touchdowns. So actually a very good season for our number one. Jonathan Mingo came in second. 78 catches, 943 yards, 11 touchdowns. Not as many yards but he had a huge impact. And then Duran Overton, who I really didn't give a shot to start until later in the season, ended up hauling in 787 yards and seven touchdowns. Dalvin Ridley, somebody that we are still, you know, trying to figure out if he is gonna be a long-term solution for us or not. Five touchdowns, 502 yards. His present was felt almost every week when he was healthy. Xavier Leggett, 
not a horrible season, but also did not. He was very inconsistent, very, very inconsistent. And we didn't really have anybody else really pop off for us whatsoever. Jack Thompson, of course, leading us on the defense. Um, who had the most sacks? Draymond Jones with 11 sacks. He was a monster. He really was a huge contributor. Same with DJ Wanham. Very underrated season for him. Eight and a half sacks. Didn't get talked about a whole lot, but he made a lot of plays for us. Trevin Wallace, though, was really like that guy that I want to see us build into a very good player for us. Take over the role of Shaq Thompson at some point, along with Jock West Green, hopefully. But even though Green was on the field as well, he just did not have as much of an impact as Trevin Wallace did. Shaq Thompson also led us in interceptions. Jordan Fuller right after him with three. Then it was only one apiece for everybody else. Wallace, Simmons, Nelson, Horn, and Battle. Very strange defensive uh, or interception type of layout, in my opinion. Only four fumbles. Three of them all recovered by Derek Brown. So defense had its moments for sure. And that brings us to the free agency period. Now, I've looked at this uh, for a few minutes before. There is a lot of running backs here, but like I mentioned, Jonathan Brooks went on a tangent before he got hurt. I would like to see if he can stay healthy before just cashing in on him and bringing somebody else in. So we're not going to go after any of these guys. I did find a, a half or not a halfback, a fullback that I could bring in Jaleel Sharp. Jamison Williams is out here and it is a very tempting play. And honestly, I cannot say that I might not come back to this, depending on if there's enough guys in free agency to fill out this roster in other areas, because adding a 98 speed wide receiver like this is not something you can do very often. And with Deion Boyd's arm talent, I mean, I would love to see this guy flying down the field, catching a fly a fly route from, from Boyd throughout the season, but it's not a need right now. Tight end is actually a bigger need for us than anything else, because we don't know what we have in Ridley. Not enough to try to bring in somebody like Mark Andrews, though, as good as he is. Um, that's very expensive, and there isn't too many guys that are going to be upgrades at the position. If I could maybe find somebody that could... Ooh, this, this right here is the type of move that I'm looking for, Jelani Woods. This is a guy that's similar to Dalvin Ridley in terms of what style of play he has. All fast, like just... Like, too big of a receiver to play receiver type of guy. I'm going to be coming back to him, for sure. Because if we can bring in a guy like him, or even a guy like maybe Daniel Bellinger, younger, not necessarily somebody that you have to start, but somebody that could develop, that's what I'm looking for. So we're going to come back to this for sure. Left tackle, right tackle. This is, this is the bigger area, like one of the biggest areas of need on our offense, for sure, is the tackle position. We just lost out on Moten, who is just not interested in coming back here. We could go another route with a veteran with Caleb McGarry, who has decent interest with us. He is a scheme fit. Um, a little bit quicker, which is good. Not as strong. Pass blocking seems to be his weak suit, though. He seems to be more of a run blocker, and we really don't need a run blocker. I could, however, look into bringing him in as a guard. I mean, that would be pretty pretty cool. Let's see what we have at guard right now. Brandon Scherf is the best player available, but he's 34 years old. I'm not exactly looking to bring in somebody that old at that position. Um, Joel Batonio, yeah, same thing, 34 years old. Uh, John Runyon is available in the centers. We have Connor McGovern, who's 28 years old, 77 overall. So not a lot of, of big names here on the defensive line. I'm just curious to see if I decide to bring in McGarry, what kind of, of situation would be fitting for him. So let's offer him a contract. We are the only team right now that is interested in him. So I want to try and see if I can make something happen here with giving him an extra year, but then taking some of the cash away and seeing what that does. Okay, so we're still at a very, very good spot when it comes to the offer. So I don't think that will be too much of an issue here. Uh, defensively, 
this is where we're at, okay? Let's just take another quick look at the adjust lineup so that you guys are following me here when I'm talking about different players and why I'm looking at those areas. We have a really good, I think, right guard with Hunt. We have decent left guard with Lewis. Equano is, he's on the verge of becoming a bust. You know, he's getting to that point in his career where it's like, are you gonna take that next step or not? And we've had some issues before with his pass protection. And I do know that he is not known to be a very good pass blocker. I mean, looking at his ratings, he is more suited to be a run blocker. So I'm almost wondering if we can find ourselves two tackles, if I would be better off moving him inside to take over one of these guard positions and then finding tackles out on the outside that are better suited for pass protection. I, it, this is just tough for me because we have a very good offensive lineman that's not performing the best at his job specifically, but he's performing in other areas. So if I could put him in the middle and, you know, let him play there, that might end up being the best spot for him. So I'm looking for offensive linemen for sure. That is something that is high on my list right now. Defensively. We need, a, we need an edge rusher. We know that. I think we're good at defensive tackles, not something that we need to go at early in the draft, but I think edge rusher is something that we need to prioritize early on in the draft. And then after that, it has to be safeties, I think. Yeah, it has to go D-line and then safeties and then offensive line. I think those are our three biggest areas right now. And specifically tackles and defensive ends when it comes to O-line and D-line. So of course we have the offer in to McGarry, veteran player. But another thing here that we could look at is somebody like Jawan Taylor, you know, or somebody similar to where he is fit to be a pass protector. In the grand scheme of things, even though the ratings doesn't show it, he is a much better tackle than that of Aquanu right now. So what if I brought both of these guys in? Move them to their respective positions at left tackle, right tackle, and then we move Equano inside to be more better suited at left guard. That would sort of fix our offensive line in one offseason. I think that's what I'm going to do. The problem with Taylor is he does not have any value, like any type of want to come here. So if we pay him, we have to pay him a pretty handsome amount. Um, I'm going to see what a player friendly gets us. Um, I don't know if it's going to make much sense. Well, we are three of or four of five on the, the little bars there. So not bad we still have 15 million to work with and looking at the defense here i'm not seeing Drake jackson might not be a bad choice but he's not gonna be a scheme fit for us cameron thomas could be a scheme fit he's only 26. if you watch my bucks franchise you might remember this guy jermaine johnson we traded for him he ended up having a breakout season for us and before all the stupid stuff happened that derailed that whole franchise series, he was on the cusp of becoming a great player for us. Now, he's 27, 84 overall. He has seven offers though, and not a single shred of interest in us, which sucks. We, oh, we don't even have the money. He wants a bunch of money. So as much as I would like to, it looks like we wouldn't even be able to afford them if we wanted to that is unfortunate the problem is a lot of these guys see how bad we are and they don't have any like they don't want to come and play here like look at the interest level on all these guys nobody wants to come here you don't need a corner so that's fine i don't care there is a couple of safeties but again there's just no interest nobody wants to play with us we have to fix things here through our own development and our own drafting in order to to make this team relevant again and it went in the terms of the league so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to stick to what we have right now we don't have a lot of money left we only have 15 million i'm going to go back here i'm going to sign i'm going to offer those two guys the younger guys jaleel sharp the fullback so we're just going to do the one-year deal here the neutral risk see if he takes it i uh, believe yeah we're the only team offering and then i'm also going to do that with where is he? Jelani Woods right here and see if he would accept this. Now, he doesn't have much interest in us at all, so this might be a little bit difficult, but we're going to see what we can do. We're the only team offering, so it could work. That puts us at four of five, two linemen, 
tight end, fullback. I would really like to bring on somebody on the D-line. Even if it's somebody that is a little bit lower on the totem pole. Nick Benito is a interesting player. He's very fast, decent finesse move. Tackling is sort of average, below average play recognition. He can't cover though. Zone coverage is horrible. He shouldn't be playing standing up. I want to try and see if I can offer him a decent a contract, and then I would move him down to the line and compete for whoever else we bring in during the draft. And that'll be our last one. And this really is the only, th only thing we can do because we we don't have a lot of remaining caps. So I don't even know if he'd even be interested in this. So we're going to make him an offer and see what happens. So we are the only team offering. So as of right now, these are the five targets. Caleb McGarry, Jawan Taylor, Nick Bonito, Jaleel Sharp, and Jelani Woods. Very exciting free agency. Yeah, right. So we're going to go ahead and hit the eval period, see if these guys will make decisions on their offers and go from there. The good thing is we're the only team offering all these players. So chances are if some of the, somebody disappears from this list, they signed with us. They all made their decisions. I don't know if that's good or bad. Oh, it's good. Every one of them decided to sign with us. So what we are going to do now is we are going to be making some pretty big adjustments here to the line. I'm going to be taking Jawan Taylor here. And I'm going to be moving him to left tackle. And then I'm going to be taking Aquano here. And I'm going to move him to left guard. What I also want to do now is we have Damian Lewis, who is an undersized uh, guard. He's only 6'2". A little bit smaller than your average guard. So what I think might be a good option here is we could try to move him inside. And if that is the case, that would give us an out with Austin Corbett, who is, I'm assuming is going to be up on contract here soon. So let's see. What is what is his specialties in? Power, pass, protecting, agile. Okay, so he's not very good at really anything in particular except pass block power. So it's good that he's on the inside. Moving him to the center gives us the same overall here as we have with Corbett but for a lot cheaper, where I could cut this guy and still save $3 million, whereas I really couldn't do that if I cut the other guy. And I might just do that. I'm not sure yet, but it's something that I'm very much considering because we now have a decent line. Aquano here at left guard. Dewan Taylor, not as good as Aquanu technically, but he is within his skill set at left tackle. We did downgrade but saved money with Kayla McGarry. And then of course we still have Robert Hunt. So I like this move. We have a lot of money on this defensive, on this offensive line. We really do. And some of these things we just can't get out of. The only one I'm okay with is the one with Waquano because he's young. He can still improve. He's not dead to water. He's not dead in the water just because we had, I, I moved him to guard. He could still end up improving and I'm going to work on his pass protection when I can. And then we'll see if he can eventually take back over the left tackle spot. But he is better suited at guard. We have a very expensive Damian Lewis at center right now. But he still has two years left on this deal that he was that he signed with Carolina before I got here. Okay. Before I got here. I did not sign him to this egregious of a contract. But he's making a lot of money. So I think what I'm going to try to do now with Damian Lewis being here is I'm going to try to restructure his deal. He hasn't lived up to that big ass contract that he was that he was given. Um, it will only free up 3.19. Or 3.91 one, yeah, 3.19. And it'll be added to the final year of his deal. Next year we're apparently supposed to have 77 million. We have a lot more room next year. Yeah, I think I might have to do that. Yeah. Because we're, we're definitely gonna have to bring in somebody else here eventually. Um in free agency here. Um, Robert Hunt is another one that had a really big contract. And let's see, can we restructure him? This would save 11.6. Wow, that would be a huge chunk here. We need this. Yes, we do. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to do that. We restructure Robert Hunt. This is part of why I was excited to do the Panthers because they did have a lot of weird and bad contracts. And I knew it was going to be sort of interesting to try and overcome them. So 
that works. I mean, we have a lot of money on the offensive line and we're not getting a lot of production, but that's just something we're gonna have to work through until the end of their contracts. Um, I'm happy with Wanham. We have DJ Johnson here, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down Benito to right end. And now we have Nick Benito here at right end. He is a 75, so he is a much needed upgrade over what we had. Um, LeBrian Ray, I think we're just gonna cut ties with him. I mean, he's over, he's 27. He's a 63 overall. He's not doing anything really for us. We're just gonna go ahead and cut him. Um, I'm happy with our line as of right now. We need to clear this up though. I, I gotta get rid of some of these guys. Ika was a cool story for a little bit, but it is time for us to move on from him. He, I don't think he's gonna be able to develop. And right now with the emergence of Draymond Jones, it's just not needed. Zach Pickens is another one where it just is not necessary right now. But we're gonna go ahead and release him. And that clears up a lot more room here. You know, we have Derek Brown and Draymond Jones as our starters. We have Bobby Brown and Crumity as our reserve players. We do need to find linebackers. That's per particularly why we really needed to make adjustments to our, our cap right now. Um, we also need to move on from some of these guys. I will leave all of the rest of these guys here. I mean, there's more than what we're gonna go with to the rest of the season, like into the regular season with, but we'll see what happens. We, I, I do wanna focus on safety in the draft this year as well. Um, and again, here is a reminder of our draft picks. We have the ninth pick. We ended up getting to ninth, which is awesome. Um, second round, third round, fourth, it's three, six, and a seventh. Next year though, we have our second round pick that we're gonna be without, so that is unfortunate. But we do have a number of good picks and we didn't have a lot of them. Our trades that I made throughout the season to get rid of some players actually ended up paying dividends because that's what gave us enough here to have more than uh, like five picks or four picks or whatever it was. So now let's go back to free agency here and let's see what we have on the market for linebackers. We need a linebacker, a couple of them actually. And there's not a lot of guys that really cared to sign with us. Um, I feel like I want to go a little bit farther down though. I don't think we need to bring on that, those good of players because we do have guys already in positions that we plan on starting. So Chris Barnes here though, I mean, he's a little bit better than I really need, but he is one of the few that's not 32, is interested in us and is a scheme fit. So I'm gonna to try to bring Chris Barnes in. Uh, it's a two year deal. And look at that, now with this deal, we'll still have 17 million left. We cleared almost $20 million from those adjustments that we just made with the restructuring and the release of all those extra players that we just really did not need. So let's go ahead and offer him a deal. See what he says. Okay, we are the only offer, perfect. There doesn't seem to be too many guys down here that are that interested in us either. Eric Kendrick, so that would be a really good mentor. But he is 34. Oh, here we go. We could bring in somebody like Brian Asamoa and Zach Vaughn. I think Asamoa is a good one to bring in. He's very athletic and very fast and is not going to have that much of a, 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 of a, resp or a request for his payment. So only $7 million over two years. That's not bad. The outside linebacker is here to see if there's anybody who cares about us over here. Does not appear to be <laughs> the case. I would love to bring in Nolan Smith Jr. He is super fast, super fast. Wow, I, I forget how fast he is, 90 speed. That's crazy. Ooh, Troy Anderson is out here. I love me some Troy Anderson. This guy is, is always fast. Channing Tyndall is also available. He's got some decent interest in us. That makes it three of five. Okay, so now we know we need a quarterback. I forgot about that. Let's see. Ooh, Jameis Winston would be an awesome guy to bring in. One year, five million? Oh, for sure. And then I'm gonna take a quick look here at safeties to see if there's anybody down here that's a little bit younger. I always like looking at guys who are on the younger side to see if there's anybody at a decent overall that we could bring in as more of a, how good are you type of situation? Can you improve? Like Nick Cross, I brought him in in previous uh, in a previous franchise, actually with the Bucks. And he was our backup free safety there. Um, he's young. Does not have a lot of interest in us though. Ronnie Hickman is another one. He's a 74 overall. 6'1", 209, this would probably be more of a strong safety. Yeah, 86 speed, 87 hit power though. And now compared to Nick Cross, 
90 speed, 96 excel. Awareness is lower. Play rec is much lower. Hit power is sort of on par. It says it's not 87, but it's 84. Um, 891 injury, so a little bit better there. I feel like Hickman is the better player, but Cross gives you more range and possibility with um, down the field. 75 zone. What was what was Hickman? I think he was close to that, wasn't he? Oh, wow. He actually had much better zone coverage. It's just that he's not as fast. 86 speed, 89 acceleration. But he is able to bring the hit stick with him. Does he have a big hit uh, tendency? No, he doesn't. You can't fix that speed. You know what I mean? Like, Madden does not give you enough opportunity to fix that speed. 86 is rather slow, and especially with how fast the receivers are in Madden, that's a very slow safety. I do, however, like his play rec and awareness. I wish he was a little bit heavier so that he could potentially play linebacker because he would be a beast at linebacker, but 209 is way too light to be playing linebacker, and his block shedding is atrocious. Yeah, I think I do. I think I'm going to bring in Hickman. I know his speed is not very good, and I just said that it's, you can't fix it, and I get that. But man... The, the rest of the stuff that he has is good. This is really tough. He would be moved to strong safety. I mean, do I have enough money to bring them both in? I doubt it. I I really doubt it. Let's let's just see. If I do, I'll make that. I'll, I'll do it. Why not? Um, is there somebody that I could take off of this board for now that I can come back to? Probably take Jameis Winston off right now. I mean, we do need a quarterback more than we need a safety, so maybe I shouldn't do that. And we're bringing in three linebackers, which is needed because we only have three on the roster right now. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a evaluation to see if he signs. And then I'm pretty sure that Nick Cross also doesn't have anybody that's offering him a contract. No, he's not. So he should be available for me to sign again if everything goes well and I can find some room. But I really need to get these guys fine because these this is filling out our roster for the rest of the of the stuff and this is going to give us again more leeway in the draft so let's just go ahead and we'll hit eval offer a couple of them okay so we got asamoa and tindall so that's two of the linebackers and we still don't have any type of competition with these guys so now let's go back to free safeties nick cross is here still nobody offering him i can offer him this and let's see what it looks like yeah i mean this would bring us down to like next to nothing but this fills out everything with us if we get all four of these guys that would be big okay so we got barnes we got hickman we got cross and we get winston we got everybody guys oh my gosh okay so this might not have been a very big and fancy free agency, but this was actually a very important free agency. We we shored up a lot of things. All right, so now that everything is done, I've made the adjustments. I have updated the depth chart. Let's see where this team stands now after we made all of these changes. So we bring in Jameis Winston. He is going to be the mentor slash backup for Deion Boyd. I love that signing. I love Jameis Winston, guys. I really do. I mean, I don't know how you don't like the guy. Um, Jonathan Brooks should be back. So I just put him back as the starter. Uh, receivers did not change. Tight ends. We did add Jelani Woods. He is backing up uh, Ridley right now. We brought in McGarry to be our right tackle. We brought Damian Lewis from left guard to center to take over for Corbett. And then we also brought Equanu from left tackle to guard because that is where he is better suited for his overall um, ratings right now. And then we also brought in Jawan Taylor to be our new left tackle for the time being. Now, is all of this stuff permanent? No. This is just what we have available to us and what the best outcome is right now for this team. Defensively, not a lot of new starters. The only one is Nick Benito because, well, we just, we have a lot of guys that are, we there's just not a lot out there, right? There wasn't much sense to bring in somebody when Wanham had eight and a half sacks for us. I don't need to replace him. Raymond Jones was a beast. I don't care that he's a normal dev. Uh, Brown is, well, he's Derek Brown. Um, our linebackers are young. We brought in Barnes, Asamoah, and Tyndall, all to help the depth here. They'll also be very fast, and if they need to come out and take a breather, we'll have some extra speed on the field for sure. Our safeties are still the same, but we now have two new young backups that could potentially turn into something or be somebody that you know is fighting for a spot 
um, training camp when we potentially when we potentially bring in another safety. We have Rod, uh, Ronnie Hickman and Nick Cross. I'm very happy with the way this has turned out. I think that we really improved this team, not only like starting wise, but like depth wise. Our depth was not very strong. Now we have very strong depth, I think, in the linebacking core and the safety position. We do have a little bit of money left. I might do that. Uh, I might end up bringing in another lineman because we don't have too many. Maybe like a, a really young, cheap uh, right tackle. Or I could bring in another guard. I'm not sure yet. I'm just sort of looking around and I found one right here. Ralph Langford. Look at that. Um, can we afford him? No, we cannot. I can see if he will take a much cheaper deal. Probably won't. Yeah, that's probably not going to go anywhere, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. I mean, what's the worst that you can say? No. And now we are getting to the end of the free agency where we can see Mock Draft 5. Um, I'm just going to wait till we get to the last stage before we do that. So we're going to just sim on through and get to the last part of this video, which is, of course, the draft. All right. So now the free agency recap. Let's take a look and see who all got better. So Mark Andrews, the tight end, going to, going to the Chargers. Devon Holland to Tennessee. Iron Smith going to Atlanta. Joel Petonio going to the Commanders, Fuller to the Steelers, Jermaine Johnson also going to the Chargers, Zadarius Smith to the Falcons, Tyron Matthew to the Broncos, Evans goes to the Jets, Bosa to the Falcons, Broncos for Taylor Morton, Algier going to the Giants. That's actually a pretty good fit. Uh, Owe going to the Seahawks. David going to the Titans. Jameson Williams ends up landing in Indianapolis with Anthony Richardson. Darius Slay to the Broncos. Okay. Jerome Ford ended up going to New Orleans. So we're going to be seeing Jerome Ford, guys. He will be our division rival now. Interesting. So same with Jalen Petrie. He ends up going to the Saints as well. Romeo Dobbs. Wow. So the Saints finally getting rid of all that, ca that cap craziness. Started going crazy. They sign a few really good young pieces, Dobbs, Eatry, and of course, Jerome Ford. Okay. It'll be interesting to see how that stuff works itself out. And that is gonna wrap up free agency for off season number two. All right, so we are gonna look at the prospects first before we get to choosing the three that we are going to eventually do extra scouting on. And now after free agency, what I'm thinking about is I don't want to rule out any of the three big position groups that I mentioned, which is defensive ends, tackles, and safeties. But we do have wiggle room now to where if we find a player that is just absolutely too good to not go after, we can, you know, make that decision. Um, I feel like tight end with the addition of Jelani Woods gives us a little bit of a, of a chance to maybe give Ridley another season to see if he can turn his injury history around. I'm not too concerned with going after somebody, especially early, like when I did for Kenny Yates. But if we could find somebody maybe down in day three that we could add, I would be definitely on board with that. Uh, tackles, we did not get the best outcome with Sammy Griffin. Around three to four grade. He is not worth a round one pick. I might end up doing this for more of the tackles because I definitely feel like that's a big need of ours, especially down the stretch. Um, we don't have a lot on the interior line because we really just did not have enough, you know, to go around with the scouts and we don't have anything really on this end either with the tackles. So I, that might be the spot where we have to go. Uh, defensive ends though. This is the big one. This is what we put all of our stock into with our, with our scouting our national focus and we can see that dylan ford is not exactly worth a top five pick he's actually not even worth a round one it's late round one to round two for his talent evan parker is on scale here here with round one talent uh kyle moorhead six three okay he's more of a defensive tackle not worth it martin whitfield is looks more like a three four defensive end he is much better than his projection and everybody else sort of falling in line to where they should be. Let's see if there's anybody crazy down here. No, there is not. Potential day three still here in the undrafted. later down the, the line if we get to that point. And now on to these guys. So at the top, D'Angelo Gore, definitely not worth it. Garrett Bush, who was one of the guys that was on my favorites list. He is a top five talent. The question is gonna be though, 
He is listed as a power rusher. We should have all of his physicals and or his skills now. His finesse moves is a D. And his injury is an F. So not only does he not fit our scheme, he's not good at block shedding. He's not good at finesse moves. And he has F injury. He does have A's in awareness and power moves, of course. But that... <sighs> As much as I like taking a top five talent, I don't know if that fits our system. You know, if he is, if his finesse moves is that low, we are a four, three defense now. And we were a three, four when I initially made this list. So, I mean, we might have to reconsider that even though he is a top five, is it worth it at a, at a ninth overall pick if he's there considering the injury rating? And we don't know if he's even going to fit with our system. Uh, Matt Moore, though, is projected to go where he should. Same with Paul Polk, who was another guy that was on my favorites list. Um, not too many guys that really stand out, though, in this class. Wow. I was not expecting this. We also have a lot of guys who are more... You know, we, like There's no speed rusher up here except for the guy that's not worth his talent. <laughs> now, there could be guys that are a little bit more balanced. Let's take a look at that. Nope, never mind. The, this one is the best one. It's Trevante Ridgeway, who is not worth his projection either. That really sucks when you go all in on a position, hoping to find some talent and you just, you can't find it. Like there's nobody even down here for a steal. The closest would be Garrison Northrup. But I mean, at best he's around three to four talent. Finesse moves is a B. So, I mean, that's something that is definitely available to us. Um. We know that Jawan Chamberlain is day three talent. We don't know much else about the others. We do know, of course, that Steven Briggs is going to be a round one talent, and I definitely want to aim for him later on in the draft because while I love Draymond Jones, you can't, you, I can't pass him up. 355 pounds, he sort of gives us what I wanted Ika to be able to give us, but he just couldn't get it done. He couldn't develop that just huge body on the defensive line. Um, we don't have anything unlocked for anybody else either. So it's, uh, yeah, not a lot of good stuff here for that. Uh, we could look at safeties as well, but we're going to just work through the whole list here. Linebackers. I mean, I would not be opposed after looking at the mock draft, of course, of looking at a couple of these, of these speed rushers that are up here to see where they fall. Um, I also really like Perry Barnett, and I mean, I know we don't need linebackers, but my gosh, I, Thompson, we, he's down to an 82 or an 80 or something like that. He's going to get hit again after this season, and if I could bring on somebody like Elijah Wheaton or Mike Cook or even Perry Barnett, I don't know where he's going to fall in the draft, but I mean, that wouldn't be a bad move either. Uh, the outside linebackers here, there's no speed rushers. Wow. What is, what do they think speed rushers is dying? Like it's not, it's like one of the most sought after positions. That's crazy. Okay, we don't need anything at corners. Nothing that I would even consider going after till way later. And now onto the safeties. We will have some guys uh, unlocked. Ooh, okay. And we right away, we're seeing some good stuff here. Antoine Cook, round one to two talent or round one to two projection with round one talent. So he is a little bit undervalued in the draft process right now. Uh, Vince Ingram, not worth exactly what it says he is, but he's not that far off of it. We don't know much about these guys down here. Um, not, nothing really down here that sparks my interest. Strong safeties, nothing down here at the bottom. Oh, but we do have two good options at the top here. Lance Dillon and Alex Smith. Alex Smith is round one talent. Same with Lance Dillon. So let's see. Dillon is one year younger. 6'2", so okay, it's both 6'2", Smith is much heavier, he's about 219, or he is 219. He's hybrid, he's zoned, so he would be more of a scheme fit for us, I think. Um, a awareness for both. B play rec to C for, in favor of Dylan. Man coverage is an A in favor of Smith. Zone coverage is favored B to C for Dylan. Catching favored A to B for Alex Smith. Tackling on is the same. Out hit power A for Alex Smith, B for Dylan. Pursuit goes to Lance Dylan for B to C. 
Block shedding much better from Alex Smith. Finesse moves, not really something I'm too concerned with, but Dylan, but Dylan does get that nod. Don't care about kick return. Stamina D. Okay, that goes to Smith. Injury F. Dylan B. Okay. Okay, so. Now it comes down to the injury again. Let's take a look at these guys' player cards here and see where they stack up in their physical. So, physical player who delivers bone-crushing hits, struggles to find the ball in the air, has a motor that runs through the whistle, often looks to rip the ball from runners, looks disciplined, resulting in avoidable penalty. Okay, so he's going to be a disciplined trade. He should have big hitter. So those are two pluses for Lance Dillon. Fifth in safeties at the combine, second in safeties at the pro day. First in vert jump at both, first in broad jump at his pro day. Good speed, solid, good. Okay, now let's look at Alex Smith. Same thing, bone crushing hits, struggles to find ball, has a motor that runs through, often looks, okay, he has strip ball and he looks disciplined. So he has both the same traits, plus he has a strips ball trait, which is big. Um. Oh, he is first, first in 40. Third bench press, second and vertical jump at both. First it at the combine and broad jump. Second it at his at his pro day. Six for both at three cone. Fourth there. Solid speed, solid acceleration. Good, great, good. Okay, so solid, solid, good, good, solid, good. Okay, so Dylan, this is where it gets tricky and and hard to tell with what they mean by these numbers because. If you look at Alex Smith with his physicals, his ratings, it says solid, solid, good. So it's backwards here because it says that Alex Smith is the faster player, but he has a solid rating, right? Whereas Dylan is listed as the second safety and has good speed. Good is better than solid in the like the Madden hierarchy here of what the ratings are. But it's saying that Smith is faster. So which one do you choose? And then the other part here. So one of them has bad injury. The other one has bad stamina. Luckily, I don't have progressive fatigue on, but that doesn't mean he still can't get winded. The only question is how often does a safety get winded in Madden? I haven't seen many safeties have to come out, so I don't think it's very high on my list of things that I'm concerned about. He has one A, and that's in awareness. He has a lot of Bs, catching, play rec, pursuit, finesse, injury, and zone. Whereas Alex Smith has four A's, awareness, man, hit power, and catching. Play rec and zone are worse, and injury is an F. And he has bad stamina and horrible injury. So, I mean, looking at these two players, I would rather take Lance Dillon. Why risk it? You know what I mean? Why risk another bad injury like we, we're dealing with right now with Dalvin Ridley if we can get a player that's pretty much on par with almost everything but doesn't have that bad of an injury? The only thing we'll be giving up is Smith does have the rips ball away, which is the strip ball trait. That would be the one thing that he does not have that I would like to see have. But Dylan does still have discipline penalties and big hitter trait. And we don't see that many fumbles anyway. So I, I don't know if that would even be something that would be a determining factor in my decision here. But as of right now, I would say that Dylan is the better option if between these two guys. Of course, we don't know things about Justin Ginn or Evan Harding. And actually, I'm almost wondering now, is there anybody else that's even... Actually, there's not. Look at this. Nobody else is even close in awareness. These two are the only two with A's. Play recognition, they're also the highest. Man, they're also the highest. Well, I mean, Dylan isn't, but again, we're not too concerned with man. Zone. I mean, Harding could be, but he also has D's and a couple of other things. Tackling. Gin could be there. Hit power is potentially there for Gin as well. Pursuit is on par. Yeah, I, I just, I, to me, it feels like Dylan and, and Smith are the only two worthwhile options right now. 
I don't see an, a spread on some of these guys that would make me want to invest more in them. You know what I mean? Now on this side, is there anything better over here? So B seems to be the ceiling for awareness. And now, okay, now let's take a look at what Antoine Cook is. Now he is shorter, 5'11". He does have big hitter. He can rip the ball, but he lacks discipline. So he's gonna be undisciplined in penalties. Great speed, decent acceleration. So that's even worse than, than solid. Solid agility. This also says he's first. And then skills, A injury, A stamina, B play rec, B awareness, A catching, B man, C zone. We know all three are round one talents. I'm gonna add Cook here to my favorites list because he might end up being able to be pretty close with the other two guys at safety. But now we have to make the decision on who we want to look at for the rest of these guys. And partially right now, we don't need to do defensive ends. I think defensive tackles, we don't need one, but if I can land, you know, this big dude named Briggs, I'm gonna do it. Outside linebackers, there is nobody that is considered a finesse rusher, nobody. If you go to finesse moves, the best one is Telvin Collins, but he's a top five pick. Chances are we're, we're not gonna see him. Shaq Preston is also one, but he's also a UDFA. So <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna really be that um, helpful in our, our quest for better pass rushing. On this side, there doesn't seem to be anybody who's good at finesse moves. Yeah, our best one is a C. That is Darius Cummings, who again is a power rusher. And he's 23. Oh my gosh. This is not a good draft, guys. It really isn't. I feel like I'd be better off choosing a linebacker here and then maybe going back to the offensive line and picking one or two guys from here. Because it seems like we're not going to get much from the defensive ends out of this draft. So we might as well load up on linemen and uh, maybe another linebacker to anticipate the retirement of Thompson or at least the, the him moving on. I need somebody that can pass block though. That's that's the key here. Oh, Marion Stapleton, look at this. A finesse, A pass blocking, A to C awareness. Injury A to C, impact B. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna add him to the favorites list. What about, okay, Greg Cash. He's a round two to three guy. A pass block power, A to C finesse, A to C. So he could have A's there, we just don't know. Same with awareness. He could be a really good player for all we know. Um, injury is also A to C, impact is A. Oh, I gotta add him to the favorites as well. Okay, let's go to the, right, the left tackles and see if there's anybody else that's like that over here. So pass block. Well, we know that Sammy Griffin, even though it says he's had all these A's, is not worth a round one uh, projection. We don't have a lot of good pass protectors in this class either. What is going on here, guys? Oh, wait, Robert Wilcox. A awareness, A pass block, power and finesse. Can't run block, it seems like. E injury. Spencer Weatherford, A awareness. Oh, okay, pass block, okay, A for that. Ooh, man, this is tough. So maybe I go Marion Stapleton and Greg Cash here. And then the last thing is we have to decide who we want to do for Perry Barnett. Well, for all these guys, we have a lot of round one projections. We should really look at the mock draft to see if these guys will even be available when it comes time for us to pick. So we are picking ninth, remember that. Alex Jones is going to be gone. No surprise there. Telvin Collins gone. Yep, that makes sense. Robin's gone. We are going to be on the board. They has Garrett Bush there just because he's on our favorites list. So not saying that we need to draft him there. Um, he has a top five talent. It would be great to be able to bring him on if he's available. But I just, his his stuff, I just can't get over. You know, his his situations. He doesn't fit our, our system at all. And he's got really bad injury. And then he can't even contribute in the run game, right? Like if you're gonna have a D tackle that maybe needs to work on his pass rushing in your system, at the very least they can assist in the run game, but he can't even do that. Uh, so we're gonna have our our chance at most of these guys. It just really comes down to, is anybody gonna fall out of round one? 
right? So let's look through here. Darius Cummings is going early. Same with Kevin Parker. So they're out of the equation. Perry Barnett's going 18. So yeah, we're not going to be able to land Perry Barnett. So it doesn't pay. Oh, wow. And Stapleton's going at 19. Okay. Um, shoot. Alex Smith going at 22. Dylan Borum going at 27. Okay. So it looks as if the one right tackle that I was thinking of could fall to the second round and potentially Lance Dillon, but Alex Smith is pro projected to go 22. No other safety though going. So the other two would still be in play. Okay, so let's, let's go back here to the linebackers. We know Barnett's out of the picture. We know Mike Cook is available for us if we want him later on. Michael Haggins, Rutherford, Wheaton, all of these guys look like they could be something good later on in the draft if we come across them. Let's just compare these guys. So we're going to go from Cook, Haggins, Rutherford, Wheaton. We're going to compare the, the four of them. So awareness-wise, only Wheaton has A for sure, but Cook could also have A. B for Haggins for sure, not sure on Rutherford. Play recognition, Mike Cook has A. Haggins could have A, Wheaton has C, and we don't know the other two. We don't need B to D for Rutherford, so he's gonna have a little bit lower probably on average. Tackling, Mike Cook only has a C, um, whereas the rest of them all have Bs. Hit power, all of them have As except Mike Cook. Block shedding, Haynes and Rutherford, or Haggins and Rutherford, all three have pretty good. I mean, BBA, that's pretty good for block shedding. Power moves, I'm not too concerned with, but they do have A to C for Mike Cook and for Rutherford. Um, finesse moves, like I said, really not that important. Pursuits, Mike Cook beats them there. Man coverage, him and Hagens are tied with, with C there. Zone coverage, Cook is going to have better than Hagens, for sure. Um, impact... Okay. So now what it comes down to is, is the tackling and hit power more important for a middle linebacker right now? Because we do have two guys that are good at pass coverage, right? With, I think Wallace and Green can both be good for us in that respect. We know Green can be, or we know that uh, Wallace can be. I think I want to add Haggins here. I really do. I mean, he's a little bit later on in the same round, right? Rounds three to four. So he's he's right in line with Mike Cook. A little bit heavier. Um, one year older, which not, not the best for me, but I really like hit power. We don't have much right now. He has A. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. And it's a later pick. They both have their injuries are on the same uh, bar. Rutherford also has it. What are they like for... Uh, their physicals here. So physicals, elite speed. Okay, so he has elite speed. Good or solid and solid for acceleration and agility. Good change of direction. Michael Haggins has good speed, poor acceleration, good agility, decent. Okay, so this guy is like, I'm guessing here, this guy is more like a thumper, right? Like he is like, maybe not like Ray Lewis, but like that kind of linebacker or Brian Urlacher. They are going to play the run. They're going to hit you, and that's about it. If you put them out in coverage, you're probably not going to do the best. Whereas Mike Cook is is not the best in those situations, but is more well-rounded and can probably cover off ball. Um, Jaleel Rutherford. He is solid, decent, solid. So right around the same, a little bit better acceleration. And he himself is probably more of a thumper as well. And then Elijah Wheaton is great good solid so much better quicker and still does possess hit power he has a hit power so that's really not bad at all maybe wheaton is the best pick here right now i honestly think that given the round three to four projection i'd rather look at Haggins and wheaton i think we're in a better spot to get one of them weatherford here this is somebody i favored him for a reason let me see here a awareness, A pass block finesse, 64309. He actually could play. This guy is actually sort of built to. Okay, this is the. Yeah, this is what we're going to do. 
we are going to do Weatherford, um, Cash, and Wheaton, the linebacker. That's what we're going to do. I really would like to do Haggins as well, because I'm so, oh my gosh, I am so torn between these two, but I think Wheaton is going to be the better prospect. So we have our guys where they're all added to the favorites list. Let's go over here. We're going to do Weatherford, Cash. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time choosing between these two guys. Impact block. Chances are Haggins will have better impact block. He's going to have better play rec. That, that's what is sort of in me here. I mean, if you can have above average play rec, I feel like that's more important than awareness sometimes, for at least for defensive players. Offensive players, I feel like awareness is the most important, obviously. Tackle is the same. Hit power is the same. Block shedding, we know is a B for Haggins. We don't know that for Wheaton. Finesse moves, we know is better for Wheaton than it is Haggins, but that, like I said, that doesn't really make much of a difference. Man coverage, C to B. Zone coverage, probably going to be in favor of, of Wheaton for sure. We get so much of that too. That's the other part of this that I'm... I, I think this is why I'm so like keen on maybe going Haggins here, but the thing is with the speed, like we can increase that. We like, There's just no way for us to do that. Stamina, he's going to be better with stamina. Not as good with injury, though. So we don't know if it's a C or an F injury. They have the same abilities. Yes, his acceleration is a little bit worse, but if we're looking for more of a, of a run-stuffing linebacker, I can work on his pass protection, or his, his coverage. And he does have better traits when it comes to playing the ball in the air. So he does have better trait in some regard. And the ones where they where com I'm really comparing them, there they have the same. Gosh, this is tough. Part of me wants to do both of them. Be very quite like to be honest with you guys. Part of me wants to do that instead of one of these linemen. I feel like I like Weatherford more than I do Cash at this point. Yeah, screw it. I'm changing my mind. I know I'm I'm going back and forth a lot, but I, this is what I've decided. Okay, I like Weatherford a little bit more than I do Cash. Weatherford is a better fit or pick for us later in the draft than cash is and then i can do both of these guys and i can stop wondering about it so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna do weatherford Haggins, and wheaton and we're just gonna see what happens before we get into the draft let's see what these guys look like now with what we have unlocked okay weatherford is a round one talent and i was right i just I just knew something was, I just knew. I, I couldn't figure it out. I'm just like, I just had a feeling Haggins was a little bit better. And not that Wheaton is bad. They're both a good pick for their spot, but Haggins is a better overall talent. I might need to trade down. That sounds crazy, but like, there's no defensive ends in the top part of this draft that make me feel like it makes sense. Alex Smith, we know is going, but we've sort of decided that Lance Dillon is the better option here. I could trade back, get some good picks. We could load up on these later guys again and just really build out this team. I think that's what I'm going to do, or at least try to. Alrighty, here we are. Start of the draft. I'm going to go ahead and just skip right to our pick. I'm not trying to trade up at all in this draft, so we're going to go straight to pick nine. And yep, it went just as, as anticipated. Now let's see what we can get for a trade down. Let's see what is available to us out here. We're at pick nine. I'm looking for picks this year though. So right now we have pick 12 and a seventh. I don't like that. Pick 29 and then a bunch of 27s. No, we want 26. That's what we're looking for is 26. Now, I'm not going two years in the future here. I want, here we go. See, something like that is more appropriate here. I think there's a little bit more to be had for that kind of a move. Okay, so this one is looking interesting. If we trade all the way back to 31, we can get a first rounder next year, a third and a fifth this year, and a seventh rounder next year. Or there's this one where we get... I don't want to do all that. No, I don't want to do all that. 
it'll be nice to get two future first but i want to first this year i don't know if we're gonna be able to like where is our second pick i should probably figure that out huh yeah i i, I want to stick around the top part of the second round we have pick nine but i don't know if that's going to be enough to get one of the safeties that we're looking at this gives us pick 24 also pick 56 this year and a fifth rounder and then a seventh next year that one is very intriguing because we might still not have to take a pick at 24 we could trade back again because we know we're not even looking for anything until the end of the first This is another one that's very similar, but no mid-round pick this year like the Packers offer with the second, or the second and the fifth. Um, man, a lot of options here. A lot of options. Pick 20, a third, a fourth two years from now, a fifth this year. That one's not bad either. But the Packers, with giving up their second on top of it, they must really want somebody. Okay, I I think I'm I think I want to take the Packers. Like I know there's other teams with more picks. I get that, but what I'm seeing this as is, oh well, that one does. Okay, let's let's compare the Niners and the Packers. So the 49ers want to give us pick 25 and pick 57, and then a third next year, and a sixth this year, and the Packers 24th, 26th, and a fifth this year. But there's no third next year. I'm not too concerned with the fifth. We have three six. I can get a fifth if we need one. So maybe we want to go with the 49ers here. Because then we still get the, to the first and the second. But we get a third rounder next year. And we still get a six rounder this year. I think this is might be the best move. Yeah, I think this is the move. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take it. So yes, Alex Smith did go. Everybody went that we thought was going to go. It's still following the same exact... Uh, you know thing from the mock draft as i've stated before in, in a couple of videos once in a while you'll get like a deviation of like one player but for the most part you can rely on the on the mock draft um now let's see if there's anything still here because like i said i don't really need to be in the first round at this point i can be at the top end of the second we could still trade back here with with somebody and get pick up mid-round picks for this year which wouldn't be a bad move so, like, for instance, this Buffalo Bills pick, we could take 32. We would get third round pick this year and a fourth rounder this year. That is okay. And this allows us to stay in the first. So we know the type of players that should be going. Now, this could shake things up. It could make things more difficult for us for getting the players that we want. But this gives us ability to re regroup our draft capital. We don't have much right now. I okay unless I see something really different I think that might be the play is the pick from or the the bills first rounder two years from now no thank you next year fourth sixth seventh this year seventh next year second this year but that's pick 38 so we're falling a little bit farther into the draft or into the second round which I don't want to do next year's first or two years from now first no thank you um no yeah, I, I think that I think that the Bills gives us the best opportunity for still getting the, the safety that one of the safeties that we're looking at. And also gives us a lot of, of wiggle room to move around the board. I know it sounds crazy. I'm giving up all these picks, but I can turn these picks still into more future picks. I don't need the screen muddied up with future picks. I can find them with all these extra assets. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. Let's pull the trigger. All right, so we went from pick nine to pick 32. We have gone way far back. We still have the guys that we anticipated being available to us on the board. And we have plenty of capital now to go after all of those middle of the pack guys that are playing, that are projected to go way lower than their value. Because we're probably gonna have to take one or two of them early to land them if we want them. So let's go ahead and we're gonna skip by each pick here so there goes garrett bush i'm not upset about that like i mentioned i i think even the the rest of the league knew he wasn't really he's gonna be probably a good player but not for our system Jaden bell goes that is a, one of the right tackles dylan borum one of the guards clarence manning a corner alan coleman another corner mike okay so a run on corners three in a row here and last pick before us is Matt Moore, defensive end. So now we are on the board again. But I think I want to stay here and make a pick. 
I believe that's what I want to do here. Let's go to our favorites list here. We still have Lance Dillon available, and I think this is the move here for us. I really do. I think that Lance Dillon gives us the best all-around chance of having a quality safety, and we know he's he is not an injury risk, which is very important to me. Um, we do still have Paul Polk on the board here, who's not going yet. He's not as valuable, apparently, towards the talent as Lance Dillon. I'm curious what his finesse is. I think it's really bad, though. Yeah, it's D. Nobody up here is, is good at finesse moves at all. <laughs> Nobody. So I think I'm going to stay put. I think we made a decision on Lance Dillon earlier in this video after comparing them between Alex uh, Smith and the other guy, the free safety. I think this is the right move for this team as of this point. Look at all those round one talents we got down there on the board in later rounds. I want to get all those guys. So let's go ahead. Let's take Lance Dillon here. Here we go. First pick of their second draft. And it's going to be Lance Dillon, the strong safety. Good value. Pick B. He's ranked number 22. We got him at 32. He is hidden development, so that is good. 90 speed, 89 acceleration, 82 change of direction. Not bad at all. And now we have a couple of picks coming up in this round. And I want to stay put where we're at, and I want to see... If anybody else falls to us, that maybe we weren't anticipating. So, Kittner, Kilmer goes. Her, Kirkland, Neal, Watkins. So far, nobody on the board. Garner, well, that was one of the tackles, but that wasn't somebody I was really high on the... Oh, there goes Paul Polk, finally. Andrew Hurley. And we are back on the board here. And now Antoine Cook is still on the board. <laughs> the other safety. Um... Not a lot of guys here that are really, that we really need. A lot of safeties, which we already took one. Halfbacks, I don't want to take a halfback already. I think that would be a little bit of overkill. Martin Whitfield is here, but he is a run stopper. He does not fit our system whatsoever. And if you look here, his finesse move is a D. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Greg Cash is here, but I still, I still feel as if uh, what's his name? The guard is a better fit as we saw he is a round one talent We don't know much about all of these players here And I'm trying to look and see if there's any reason that I need to try and take one of these guys that we don't know anything on I don't think so a lot of it is wide receivers halfbacks power rushers corners that we just do not need Antoine Harrington is here. I feel like we already have a really good, like, situation with our guards right now. Yeah, it's C to F injury. I'm just like, I'm so scared of C to F injury now. Especially this, this Madden with what's happened with Ridley. And we just don't have anybody down here, like, until later on. Like, right here with Michael Haggins. Round one to two talent. I mean, if you look at our favorites board here, we have Spencer Weatherford, who I would like to get. Stephen Briggs, who I want to get. We still, we do still have Antoine Cook on the board here. If I really wanted to double down on safeties, I could. Right? Would it make sense? Probably not. We also have Haggins and Wheaton. So I would like to get, we got one, two, three at the very least of these guys. We have the ability to get potentially a fourth here. So let's see what's available to the trade down again. But now, instead of looking for picks this year, I mean, let's let's just, let me show you these picks that we have right now. We have two, this is the one we're at. We also have this one. We have two thirds and we have two fourths. I feel like we can get almost all the players we need but with this, this, and maybe this one here. And then we could trade away and try to recoup some for next year. Because we right now, we have some extra picks in the third. But we don't have a lot else. We, we don't even have a second. So maybe if we can try to find a second round pick next year in one of these trade downs, that would be, that would be ideal. Second next year and a third this year. And a fourth next year. That's, that is very interesting right there. That's a high third round pick too. Texans right now are looking very interesting. Second, third, and fourth next year from Minnesota. 
second third and seventh next year from tennessee a third this year a fourth this year a fifth this year a seventh this okay wow steelers relax a little bit i think it was this one the texans they give us a third this year a second next year and a fourth next year which would really that would round out our next year's draft and it would give us a, a relative pick where we need it right now to, to land these players the bills have a good option here but it's all next year I want to make sure we're in position for these players in case somebody else realizes how good they are and try to get them. I want to get them ahead of time, which is why I don't want to just lose a, a pick up here. I just want to move it around the board. So I think the Texans gives us the best, a second and fourth next year. It's exactly what we needed for next year and a third this year, and it's a high third. So we're going to go and take the Texans offer. All right, now we are, our next pick is 57. All right, we are here at the end of the second. Greg Cash, the right tackle, just went. But everybody else that was taken was people that was not on this board of players that I'm trying to get right now, so I'm happy for that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make a selection here from our favorites list. I think right away, I just want to get Spencer Weatherford here. I know we're, we're sort of overextending here for him, but it's, it's needed. Now, what I'm looking at here is we have three guys that are in rounds three to four area, right? And our draft picks include this one here, and then we're into the third already. So we're, we're still having to sort of pick ahead a little bit. I might end up taking one of these picks and trading up because we have plenty of, of ammunition to do it. So let's go ahead and get our first guy selected that's on the board. And honestly, our first one is Mike Haggins. I just don't buy it though. I feel like if somebody's going to go, it's going to be that guard first. Yeah, he's the top guard. And where's Haggins? Yeah, there's still somebody in front of him. Okay. So let's go for... Let's take Spencer Weatherford here because he's a much bigger need. And we know he's a guaranteed round one talent. All right. Weatherford is pit B. Ranked number 21. So he's actually a better player than that of uh, Lance Dillon. Lance was number 22. Hidden development, 85 strength. Okay. 78 Excel, that will come in handy. All right, now what I think I'm going to do is I want to just take a quick look here at the draft board. So Michael Higgins is next on the board for, um, like, area of projection. He's ranked number 81. And then we are going down. Elijah Wheaton is next at rank 88. And then it's Briggs. Way He's way down here, though. Yeah, he's not even on this list. So our next target is going to be Haggins. And I'm hoping that he will last. But if not, if I get a little jumpy, I might pull the trigger early on him. Because we're getting to this round where a lot of these guys are guys that aren't good enough to be picked here. We just don't know it. You know, sort of like this guy here, like Vince Ingram. Round one to two projection. We're at the end of round two. He's still not taken because his talent is not there. So we know that at some point, though, these guys can get taken where their talent is if the team knows what they're doing. So we are betting on the fact that they don't know what they're doing with some of these players and that we can make the call, you know, on them before they do. So because of this, I would like to make a move up here to get another one of these picks. And the Jaguars might be a good opportunity for us to move up. Let's just take a look. I'm going to go and look at the trading market here. All right, so this is what I'm going to offer the Jaguars to trade up. They do not have a center at all. So I'm going to offer up Austin Corbett now that we have Davis as our center, a third round pick, and then a fourth and a sixth this year. So they get a good draft haul and they get a starting player out of it for them. So let's see if they'll take it. They do. Perfect. All right. So we just moved up to pick back to back and I'm going to take Hagen's here. So that way I can know that I'm at least getting him out of the way. And then I can worry about getting um, Briggs before moving on to whoever else might fall into our lap. So Michael Hagen's, he is going to be our back end of the second round pick. We know he's got good talent. And let's see, what do we get? And B minus rank number 36. Joe's good speed for linebacker, smart, heady defender, willing tackler that rarely misses. That's good to see. And he's hidden development. 
Okay, 86 speed is not bad. 83 Excel could be much better. I was expecting like low 80s for speed. Not that at all. And he's got 79 strength. That can come into handy very well in the run game. And here we go. We're back on the board at 73. We also have 75. We had a lot of third round picks, guys. Those trade downs made this entire draft. It was only made possible because like we, we didn't have any type of like nobody ended up being good out of what we put our most most of our stock into at defensive end. So because of that, we're able to play around, maybe take a flyer on some players later. I think I, I might hold off now. He's not even on this board yet. I think I'm going to hold off a little bit, like at least one more selection here. Okay, what about these guys here? Joey Upshaw. B, finesse moves. Block shedding is a C. Injury is B. Let's see. Joey Upshaw. 6'4", 265 out of Vanderbilt. He's 22. Great, solid. First in 40. Okay, he's top five in almost everything. B's almost across the board. Except block shedding, hit power, and power moves. Okay. And now let's take a look at... Trevante Ridgeway. This guy's falling down the board a little bit. Okay, a lot less, a lot good. Yeah, nowhere near. Okay. So, I think, actually, I'm going to take Joey Upshaw. We need defensive end depth. We don't know what our answer is long-term yet. Maybe Benito can be one, but Wanham is already going to be 28. Um, and this guy fell into our lap, and this is what I'm talking about. When we make these trades, we take the players we want early. Now we have opportunities that guys that maybe we weren't expecting to be available to us, but now are round three to four talent in round three to four we're almost uh we're in the beginning of round three so it might end up being a little bit of a reach but this is probably the best opportunity we have especially at a, a scheme fit he's also a scheme fit which is big so let's go ahead and let's take joey upshaw so c minus that's fine i understand it's a range maybe not the best pick normal dev but he's at 84 speed 81 excel all right and then we're on the board again and honestly, I might try to trade this away too. Let's just see what's out there. I could honestly go for just future stuff here. I don't really need anything else. Yeah, I think we're going to take this one. A fourth and seventh next year and a third this year. All right. And we're going to make our selection here. And I think now I'm comfortable with taking Briggs. There he is. He's way down here, hidden down beneath. I don't care. Give me Steven Briggs, a 355-pound defensive tackle. All right, here it is. He's a B. He was the number eighth player? What? 99 strength, hidden development. Oh, my God. Find those anomalies, guys. That's all I'm going to say. Sometimes when you find a player that just looks a little bit different than everybody else, there's a reason. Steven Briggs, the only guy on this on, in this draft that was that large. And I'm like, oh, man, I got to figure this guy out. And now he, we have a top 10 talented player in this draft in the third round. We have a lot of picks, a lot of picks at all. And we really don't have a lot of more holes that we need to fill. So this Dylan Arietta guy is still here. Um, I want to take a look at him now. 6'1", 300, a little bit undersized. He's 21. He's got good physicals, though. And he has good skills a pass block finesse and pass block and awareness his injury is a little bit lower but i'm willing to take a shot on a guy like this at this point in the draft i'm gonna take uh, i'm gonna take dylan arietta all right so it ends up being a c pick number 77 in talent and we picked him at 116 81 acceleration 84 strength that's not bad for an undersized center all right, I think I'm just going to take a flyer on one of these safeties here, and then I'm just going to sim the rest of the way through. Um, neither of these guys have the best statistics, but they're just guys that fell on the draft board, and maybe there was there they fell for a reason, obviously, but maybe there's a reason that they were initially up there. So Deontay Norris and Manny Jones, I think what I'm going to do is just go off of the physicals here. So marginal acceleration, solid speed, and then Norris has... Solid speed, solid excel. So I'm just going to take Deontay Norris in. We'll call it a day. Apparently, it wasn't a very good pick at all. So <laughs> there was more reasons that he slid than, than why he was ranked higher. <laughs> 88 speed, 89 excel, 88 agility. All right. Well, we'll see what it comes down to when we see the, the results. 
Okay, so our first types of picks ended up being very, very good. We had a 75 overall in Lance Dillon, a 75 overall in Spencer Weatherford, 74 with Michael Haggins, 69 with Upshaw, but I just took a flyer on him, a 76 with Steven Briggs, 71 with Dylan Arietta, and then just a bunch of nobodies. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll end up being good. I don't know, but they're just there. I mean, they'll, they'll probably make practice squad and we'll see what happens with them, but we end up getting, I would say six solid players out of this class. And now that we know more about Lance Dillon, we can see that he's got 76 zone, 82 hit power, 89 Excel, not bad at all. 76 awareness, a 91 injury. That was one of the big reasons why I really wanted to go with him. Spencer Weatherford. This is the guy that I'm sort of hoping can actually be a tackle in this system. 85 strength, his run blocking is pathetic, but he is great at pass blocking, which is what we needed out there on the left side. So I'm gonna move him to left tackle. He's not gonna start right away. And we're gonna just work on him, but this is gonna be our future left tackle, I think. And then Michael Haggins. This was the guy that I went back and forth with so many times. And he ends up being a 75 overall, 86 speed, not bad. 86 hit power, that is big. Okay, and look at that, he has all of them. He has big hitter, spin moves, strips ball, balance penalty, high motor, I like it. Zone coverage is absolutely trash, but we can work on that. Then Joey Upshaw, who was the random defensive end I just took because we were in the fourth round and I didn't know what else to do. He ends up having 74 finesse moves, 77 tackle, 84 speed. Our moves are not good, but we don't care about that. He has good injury, okay. And then Steven Briggs, who ends up being our best pick of the draft. Wow, okay. Let's see this. 99 strength, 76 block shedding, 82 play rec, 83 tackle, 70 power moves. His speed is non-existent, but that's okay. His acceleration is really good for somebody his size. Impact blocking is 85, 98 injury. I am happy with that, with this pick here. And then it was Dylan Arietta. This was the flyer that we took at the end. 6'1", 300, and somebody that has really good pass blocking and lead block, impact block right out of the gate. We just need to work on his run blocking. But he doesn't need to start right now, so that's that's fine. Injury's a little bit on the lower side, 84. Like to see that higher, but overall, I'm happy with that pick for like a six rounder. Now we can take a look and see what the rest of the league did so we can see all the players that we passed up on and see the players that we made decisions on that maybe you know, I we just we could have went a different way and we didn't. So first, let's see. Best player of the whole draft is the fullback that I saw. I, I saw this pop up as I was going to make a pick. A 79 overall fullback. Congratulations, Rams. Oh, Perry Barnett was the number two. Tied for number one. 91 speed, 91 excel. Holy cow. Clarence Manning, a corner was right there. Dave Middleton, and there was Garrett Bush. This was the guy that I was, I could have had. I could have had him if we, stu if we stayed where we were. But look at his speed rusher, it's a 68. And his run stopper is a 71. So in our system, he's gonna place more similarly to a 68 to a 71 than he is a 77. Now, not in every situation. He's gonna be great in a system that uses his skill set. And he also has 81 injury, so that was another big reason too. Not as bad as I was uh, sort of worried about, but block shedding is very low. Finesse move is uh, so much work needed there if he was gonna be with our system. So overall, I think he's gonna be a great player, just not a player for our system. Uh, Corey Harrington, this was the running back that I passed up on, wasn't it? When I was just like, ah, we don't need him. Let's see what he was. 94 speed, 94 acceleration, it was his injury. That's an 82, yep, that's what I, that's that's why I said no. We gotta see where, uh, what was Smith? Remember, he went earlier than us. Here it was, Alex Smith, he was a 75, so he was a little bit better than Lance Dillon overall wise. Oh, he had 89 hit power? Holy cow. Ooh, but 79 injury. Okay. Overall, I think I'm happy with our selection. And then there were other players that could have been ours. I'm um, just trying to find where they are. Here was Antoine Cook, who he actually ended up being a 75 as well. 
82 hit power, 91 speed, 75 zone. And he had 97 injury. Okay. So it looks like we made a, a good pick regardless. Both of those guys are pretty comparable, but but I do like the height that we got with, with um, Lance Dillon. So I'm happy with that pick. Greg Cash, here was the right tackle that I decided not to look into. He's normal development, 74 overall. Sort of the same situation as the guard, really. Bad run blocking. Yeah, so I guess it would have been a decent pick regardless. Now it's those the other linebacker that I was looking at. That's who I want to see next. Wheaton was his name. There was Mike Cook. He was a 74. Okay, so he was about the same overall. Much better speed, obviously, but... Um, oh, here was Rutherford. 73. 84 speed. Not bad. And then here's Wheaton. Here was... Oh, he was a 72. Huh. I thought they were a lot more comparable than that. Much faster, 89 speed, 85 hit power. So almost on par with his hit power. Yeah, not bad at all. Maybe I made it, maybe I should have went with uh, Wheaton for that speed. And that is essentially gonna bring us to the end of the off season. So it took us a long time, a lot of you know back and forth on choices. But at the end of the day, I think we had a really solid draft. I think we are Definitely on the right path of this team. We added a bunch of depth and a bunch of future players here. I'm really happy with this. And we made our depth for our draft picks much larger going into the future. We are now set for the next couple of seasons, I think, with draft picks, which is huge. We went from having none and having a lot of missing ones to now having a lot of quality players and having a lot of good looks for our future. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below if you guys think I missed out on somebody or what you think of the draft or free agency as a whole. Leave a like if you could before you head out. Subscribe if you have not already. Turn on that bell notification. And I will see you guys next time.